Hi there, it's Nicole for Honey Bee Stamps, and today I'm going to share a simple stenciled background and pair it with a large stamped image. So I'm using the Outdoor Scene Builder Stencil Collection. This is brand new. There are some mountains, clouds, you could create a sunshine, there are some trees, cloud borders. This is an awesome stencil set. I love stencils for creating a nice flat but dimensional background. I'm going to start with the large image from the Gather Together stamp set. This is a large 6x8 stamp set, and this image is substantial. It's going to take up most of the card front, but I still want to have some sort of a scene back behind it, and that's why I chose to use the stencils. I stamped these images with a black ink for Copic coloring, on some Nina Smooth 110 pound weight cardstock, and then I'm coloring them in with Copic markers. I have broken down the color combinations and listed them across the bottom of the screen. The bear is E40, 43, 44, 47, 49 different combinations of those colors. And then his scarf is R27, 59, and 89. I started with the biggest animal, kind of the center point of this image, um, just to get that color laid down. And he is a nice substantial image. If you struggle with coloring super small images, these kind of um, images are perfect and a little more forgiving than those teeny tiny ones, I think. And I really love this whole collection from the fall release from Honeybee. Gorgeous stamps, lots of cute critters, girls, all kinds of things, and you can create any kind of card. The great thing about this image is it doesn't necessarily, <clears throat> excuse me, have to be a fall or winter type of image. The scarf definitely does make it feel a little bit more that way, but these are just cute critters. You can mix and match all of the fantastic greetings from this stamp set. It is six by eight and it's a big stamp set. So not only do you have this large image, but lots and lots of different sentiments and greetings. You can mix and match and it can be for almost anything. The coordinating dies are fantastic as well as there are lots of different dies. Dies for some of the scripty words, dies for um, the larger greetings from this stamp set plus some of the smaller little images. There's not a ton but there are a few small images in this that would complement this design. Especially if you wanted to create maybe a larger scene, you could do that with this image. The deer is next, same colors as the bear, but I'm staying to the lighter side of the um, color range here and not going any higher than E44. The bunny is gonna have very, very light, warm gray colors used for him with a little R00 for the insides of the ears. And I noticed about this point that I missed the bear's paws that are wrapped around a couple of his buddies here. So I went ahead and went back with my markers and colored those in. With images that are large like this, it's really easy to sometimes miss certain little areas. And I also didn't think that I got my blending very good for the scarf, so I went back and added a little bit more color on top for that as well. I very sparingly use some of the kind of mid-tone warm grays for the bunny, about warm gray five, just for some nice shadowing and then blending it all out with warm gray zero zero and two. That warm gray zero zero is going to be the prominent color here. And then I'm going to, from that point, it was a little hard to tell where all the deer might be in the background, I thought. And so I found it a little easier to go back in later after I colored the critters in the foreground and figure out which legs were his. 
um, maybe where his body might be hiding back behind and color in those areas. Don't be afraid to go back later and fill in if you're not quite sure what goes with what. Next, I've got my cute little raccoon here. And I think he looks kind of funny until you get the color all on his little mask and things. I'm using warm gray colors, warm gray four, five, seven, and eight. And I even went in with a little a light warm gray here. I think I accidentally grabbed my warm gray too and that was way too light. So I ended up having to kind of go over everything because it, it pushed some of the darker ink out of the way. Adding little touches here and there of that dark color and blending it out. When you're working up to a black color, you always want to start with lighter colors and keep adding those darker colors in to give that look of black rather than just using a black marker to color because it's going to give a very flat look, almost like the white is very flat. So next, let's color in, I, I did color in some of the greenery and things throughout the design. However, the little leaf there to the left and the mushrooms over to the right do not die cut with the coordinating die. And I ended up not using them for my card. The bird, I'm going to color in with some yellow red colors YR 0000 31 23 24 and 27 some combination of those colors and then the skunk is going to be the same warm gray colors as the raccoon leaving that lighter strip down the center with warm gray 00 and 2 Just keep working those darker colors in. I do move my paper around a lot when I'm coloring. I don't always color exactly straight on, especially if I don't, if I wanna be careful not to drag my hand through. This ink is going to dry really, really fast and you're not gonna smear it, but I tend to like to just kind of move my paper around for whatever reason. Any of the eyes, I think the eyes tend to disappear with any sort of coloring. And when that happens, I always go back after I have die cut the image or cut it out and take a black glaze pen and add detail to the eyes to really make them pop. So there's that little mushroom in shades of red and yellow. Next is the fox. His face is going to be really light with E50. I'm going to pull in a little bit darker color as well to give some shading here in a little bit. Go ahead and color in his body. E35 and 99 are the two main colors I'm using here. I really kind of worked my way from the center to the left and then I'm working to the right and I'll finish off all of the little guys over here. What's fantastic about alcohol ink markers like Copics is you can go over them as many times as you need to and not worry about pilling the paper. So if the color combination isn't quite right or you need to deepen or darken it or add a different color, which with the squirrel, I ended up going over it a few times trying to get the right color combination. I'm only gonna list the colors I actually ended up using, but I had kind of a hard time figuring out which colors to use. And the fox, I darkened that up a little bit, um, trying to get some better shading and things. You can totally do that, and that is the great thing about these markers. I tend to always start on the lighter side of the spectrum and work my way to a darker color. That way it's more forgiving and if I need to darken things, add some shadowing, it gives better dimension or whatever, I can do that. My squirrel is E089 and then I'm gonna pull in E47. There are some other colors you're gonna see here. Um, I tried lots of different things and it just was not working for me for whatever reason. Um, so 
I did not list those here. Sometimes it's just very much trial and error. I wasn't exactly sure what colors I wanted to use. I knew I wanted him to kind of have a reddish hue to him and E08 and 09 are great for that. But other than that, I had a lot of trouble trying to figure out exactly how to get his little face to look the way I wanted. And I ended up coloring him all the same color and then darkening that just a little bit with some browns, which I liked. So I ended up staying with that. And here's a good example of going over an image multiple times trying to get that coloring exactly the way I want. That's some nice dark shadowing there. I think that's looking much, much better. Blend that out with my lighter color. And now I just have my little pigeon left and then we can start doing or building that background scene, which is so amazing. And the little pigeon is just going to be colored with some nice warm gray markers, little YR27 for the bill. And then I will die cut this with the coordinating gather together die. This would be a great sentiment also, or a great stamp set for Thanksgiving, I think as well. Now taking one of the outdoor scene builder stencils, this is the mountains. I am applying vintage photo distress oxide ink and building that mountain range. I'm applying the color kind of coming off of the stencil to the paper with Vintage Photo to keep it nice and smooth. This is Nina's Smooth White cardstock. It's not a specialty cardstock or anything like that, not watercolor, not Bristol, and it's still giving a great application. Now, after I get that mountain range border really defined and nice, I can remove my stencil and apply a little bit more ink, bring it a little bit further down the panel. I don't wanna go all the way down to the bottom so that I can apply kind of a grass um, layer along the bottom, blend the, some green into the brown without adding an additional layer. The sky is also stark white at this point without even using a mask and I did not add any additional ink to my ink blending tool, foam here. I applied a little salty ocean distress oxide along the top edge, which gives a nice illusion of sky. And then a little peeled paint distress oxide along the bottom is going to give some grass. So the entire background is completely flat. And I love that it doesn't add additional bulk. It makes this a nice flat card, but it, yet it still seems like it has lots and lots of dimension. These are my favorite kind of scenes to create because I think they look incredible, um, but the, yet they're still super easy to mail. And I think that's so important. Sometimes dimensional cards get damaged in the mail um, or you have to use a padded envelope, which means additional postage or things like that. So I'm a huge fan of trying to find ways to create dimension without adding bulk. I'm gonna spritz this whole thing with water from a distress sprayer, blot it dry with a paper towel. This is gonna add some just additional interest to my background. Clean off my work surface. I like to just spray it with a little bit of water, wipe it, clean with a paper towel. So here's what it's gonna look like. So super cute. I went ahead and stamped a greeting from the Gather Together stamp set along the bottom. And then I did die cut the dimensional greeting using the coordinating Gather Together dies from a gold foil cardstock adhered to fun foam with stick it adhesive. And it's layered right over the image. Now I felt like I needed some little hearts for this, so I grabbed another stamp set from Honey Bee. This is the Forest Friends, and I stamped the three sizes of open hearts, colored them in with my red Copic marker color combination. I'm gonna use the coordinating dies to die cut these, and then I can pop them right on my background. I love mixing and matching elements from different stamp sets. I'm a huge fan of that. I'm going to attach these to my background with some bling glue dots. And the hearts really match the sentiment. It reads, hello, you have my heart. And 
And now it's time to add finishing details. I added a black glaze or added the black glaze pin to the eyes on all of the critters. I'll attach my panel to a white side fold card base and it takes up the entire front. And then I will take glossy accents and add that to the noses on the critters and the hearts. Thanks for joining me today for this simple stenciled background showcasing the new outdoor scene stencils and the Gather Together stamp set. For more information, please visit the Honeybee blog. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.